What's up, Fabrication Nation? Welcome back to the Fab Forums. Lots, lots of good stuff going on this week. As you've seen in last week's video, I was able to get the seat done, one of the seats done in the Bibster uh, this week. Went ahead and put some dimple dyes in that thing. You had to guess what's harder, to make the first one or reproduce the first one. What do you think? What do you think, what do you think would be harder? To make the original piece or to make a piece just like the original piece? I can tell you uh, the answer is different for a lot of metal shapers. Some feel like the second piece is easier because then they, they then know what needs to be done on the second piece. Um, some feel like it's harder to reproduce what they've already done. Anyway, I'll show you some progress that I made on the seat. I think in last week's video, uh, I got the seat done. And you can see, did some of the English wheel work down here. Got all this kind of contoured, got the back contoured. A lot of the bead rolling done. But what I didn't do was the sides themselves were just flat. So they just came straight up. Even though I had this piece cut out, the sides were just flat and I just kind of had it clamped up here to hold it. So now I've got some shape in this thing. You kind of see that it curves in right here and then curves back out and then back in. Uh, a little more modern. All I did was just shrink. Well, I, sh I would shrink this flange here and then I'd shrink it back there as well. And then I stretched it here just a little bit back there as well that kind of gives it that contour this way and then up here I just shrunk this on both sides which kind of draws that top in you can actually see some of the shrinking and stretching marks on the back one of the other things that I also did was uh, put some beads not beads put some dimple dies in this thing so I had them kind of marked out previously uh, and talked about it I had them marked out where they were gonna go but they weren't in there so Went ahead and did that, pop those in there, you can kind of get the full effect on that. And really, this seat is, for the most part, done. One of the other things that I have done since the last video is put this trim piece on there. So, it's got this trim piece that goes around the headrest, all around the top, it's kind of shaped. Uh, and really, that's just to finish it off and give it a little bit more stability. Just got it Clicoed on for now. Probably put a couple more Clicos, and then in the end, this is where all the rivets will go to hold that piece in. But yeah, kind of gives it a finished look and a little bit more support. And I can actually kind of bend this thing one way or the other, depending on uh, what I need once it's finally put in the car.
So what needs to be done now? I need to make a frame for this thing. So the seat is pretty much done. I, I'd actually mentioned doing some bolstering uh, initially, but I think I like it just the way that it is. For a couple reasons. Um, one, it's so tight in here that the bars themselves will act like bolsters. I mean, you're not gonna really slide around much. There's gonna be paneling in here. Um, you, know, you can see this X bar kind of comes right by the legs. I mean, there's just not any room for you to go. And there's not really any room to create some bolstering without it making look, you know, making it look funny. And I could come, you know, way out here on this piece, but I actually like the way that it is. Really, the only thing I have left to do is make a frame for it. So I plan to make like an aluminum frame that's going to go underneath the uh, seat itself. It's going to give me a place to mount the seat. So I'll run some. Actually, I'll probably weld some bolts to the chassis and then this thing will just kind of slide over those bolts, put a nut on top, and it'll be nice and secure. I'll tie the two together and then probably have some pieces that come up and actually have supports underneath the aluminum that you're sitting on. So like probably have like a support here, maybe another one back there. And then uh, I'll put some sort of support back here behind the seat that attaches to the chassis itself. So, you know, that'll kind of get the any kind of backward momentum or just the weight of somebody sitting. I can actually sit on it now. It's um, very strong, but just, uh, just to be sure. So what needs to be done? I need to make another seat. I have the side pieces as you've seen. I've got to make a top. Uh, one of the challenges that I've got is that this seat is gonna be one inch skinnier than that seat. But what I don't want to happen is I don't want you to be able to tell that the seat is skinnier by looking at it. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to do that unless maybe just the part you sit in is skinnier and then the backrest itself is closer to the same width. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe like cheat a quarter of an inch in on each side and leave the center open. I want the headrest to be the exact same size. I think the headrest itself will be the telltale. You know, if you have a smaller headrest, you're going to be able to tell the difference between the two of them. So maybe the seat itself is a little bit smaller, but the headrest is the same size. I don't know, I gotta figure that out. Take a break from the seat and gonna make a piece to fill this area here. So initially the idea was that this was gonna be the fuel tank. It's gonna do it, you know, like the old school Model A's had the fuel tank up here. It's gonna cut all this stuff out on the inside, make a steel floor for it, and then make an aluminum tank that would basically recess right down in there that would have a lip on it where I could mount it. Uh, I've actually got a, a pump hat that would fit there. It has a filler in it. Uh, recess pump has lines that come out the whole nine yards. I don't know if I've shown you that. Here, I'll pull it out right quick. Take a look. Kind of show you what I'm talking about. So this is one of those Holly units. Probably seen these things before. Um, it's all, you know, it's all machined, and it's got a filler place, so you could just, you know, screw this off. You could fill it at the station there, and then you got a fuel out right here, oh, we're not in focus. You've got a fuel out here and then you return. And it just seals up in the tank. It's fully adjustable. Uh, this one I believe has a 255, maybe it's a 340. 
What is this thing? Anyway, it's got a big old in tank uh, pump. Like I said, it's fully adjustable so I could like make the depth of this thing perfect to fit the tank that I build. So that was the idea initially, was to put it up there. Oh. Really thought it would be cool to kind of pull up to the pump and then, you know, you just unscrew the top, you fill it right here. Lines would be really short, they could just come out, go right in the back of the, the intake or the fuel lines, regulator, and have another line that comes back, dumps it right back in the tank. Simple, right? Then, as I got to do in the back side of this thing, I realized it had more space back here than I thought, so it's gonna require more fuel line, but I think I might build a tank, a fuel cell that goes back here in the back versus up front. And then what I'll do is up front, make that all storage. Essentially kind of take all this out, make this pan deeper and flat. I mean, you could throw some rags, you could throw, you know, you could throw all kinds of stuff in here, have that thing flip up or something. Or another option is to just seal this whole thing up, keep my electronics and such in there. Uh, be easy access to everything. I've also got to find a place for some of the hydraulic stuff. I ordered the pump today, so I'm gonna start kind of working on the hydraulics, see if I can get this thing to go up and down before uh, ponies in the Smokies. It would be nice to be able to raise this thing up and down um, powered, not manually. Anyway, I'm gonna quit rambling, start working. I'm just gonna make this top right now, mainly just for looks, but it will be useful too once I decide what I'm gonna do up here.
One of the other things I did this week was I went up to Pitt, P-I-T in, uh, P-I-T, in Charlotte. So Pitt's known for, well, training Pitt crew for NASCAR. So they're training, they're known for training pit crew guys for NASCAR, but they also have their own pit weld you, which is a welding university. You can go up there, you can get certifications. Uh, you can learn to weld. It was an awesome event. Back of dimes. That's a great weld. It's a good weld. So give me a piece of copper. I'll make you one with a MIG and we'll knock it off in the floor. It's not a great weld. You know, we've got to make sure we feel it, get it to wet in at the toes, and we'll show you all about that later. But I'm missing one. What he was even, he, that's why he could not get the joint to, to go to the You can get torches in a lot of different places. The wind and get flexes and they, They're a little bit more cumbersome than, say, like a or smaller a one. Or like that. Get my filler, and I'm just going to move down the feet. Reason to drag them out. Right, where, where in places you don't want them holes, right? So just be ginger when you're starting. Dropping the need for as much amperage. All right, say I have. 200 amps. They have some awesome teachers up there, some awesome guys teaching the classes. And really, in my eyes, it's, it's kind of a no-brainer as far as if you want to get in to TIG welding, um, you pay the couple hundred bucks and you're instantly, your learning curve goes like this, right? You learn in two days what it took me years to learn. It takes everybody years to learn. So you kind of, if you really want to get a huge jump, a huge head start on the TIG welding, a class like this is like a no brainer. These guys are awesome. You guys know Mike Furick, Michael Furick from Furick Cups, right? The infamous dog fab. Furek Cups, he's there training. I mean, you got some awesome instructors that have years and years of experience. They basically pour all their knowledge into you and, and you walk away knowing um, what these guys know. So this class was a uh, entry level class to TIG welding, covered you know mild steel and aluminum. Um, they went over a ton of stuff, a lot of the technical data that you need to know within TIG welding as far as the functional uh, TIG experience, you know, you sit down and you actually got a couple hours of TIG welding, a couple hours, you got two days of TIG welding. They also offer a advanced class, so it's going to be more of the stuff that you'd see in the industry, the chrome mollies, the, the uh, stainless steels, doing exhaust, you know, all that kind of stuff. They also offer that. I think it's going to be in May and I'm going to try to attend that as well, maybe even take the bib strip there, so stay tuned. You can go follow Pitt or or just, yeah, I'll try to guys, I'll try to keep you guys in the loop. Michael Furek's place is up there too, just right down the street. Um, an amazing facility. So, you know, I think a lot of people don't understand what goes into making those cups that he's got. Not just the technology behind the gas flow that's involved in those cups, but the actual manufacturing as well. I mean, everything is made in-house. I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't get anything from anywhere else. Nothing from Mexico. As a matter of fact, I think it's the only thing that is 100% made in the US, uh, all the way down to the collets and, and that sort of thing. So very cool. I wanna do, I talked to him, may do like a full uh, shop tour, Furek shop tour start to finish. You can kind of see how those things are made start to finish. I think it'd be awesome for you guys to see. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully we can make that happen. One of my goals I've kind of mentioned before for 2020 is to get out and see you guys. So I'm notorious for just being in the shop working on my own stuff and I don't really get out and see the community. I don't get out and see you guys much. Gonna do that this year. That's I've, I've talked about it before. I wanna do that this year. Gonna be going to Ponies in the Smokies uh, in, in a March. So if you're anywhere near the Smoky Mountains, check that out, Ponies in the Smokies. I'll be there, gonna take the Bipster and have a special, a special surprise vehicle that I'm gonna bring with me. So that'll be happening. Um, it's an amazing event they put on every year in the Smoky Mountains. I mean, it's like, take the family, go on vacation, and if you're into Mustangs, you can go do the pits thing, ponies in the smoky. So anyway, gonna be there. Got some other things on a list too, uh, around this area, wanna do those. But in order to do those, I felt like I need to step up my game a little bit. So I bought me a, a covered car trailer so I can put this stuff in there and then come see you guys. I call it my mobile office. 
So I needed to start outfitting that with some stuff. Place to hold a jack, place to hold uh, ratchet straps, all that kind of stuff. Try to get organized in that thing. I'll probably add some more stuff later, so more content coming on the trailer. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this week. Hope you enjoyed that. A little bit something a little bit different, not much Bibster content. Gonna be back on that thing hot and heavy. Gotta get ready to go to the ponies and the smokies. So, yeah, anyway, as always, thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys next Friday. As you know, every Friday, 8 a.m., you see me. Go do work, son. <laughs>